think about the progress that we've made with Droid and the iPad. So last year was the, was the year of the iPhone, without question. I think if you look at Compete and our rapid adoption onto the iPhone platform is a great proxy for what's happened in the marketplace. So with, with the Android operating system and Droid phones, Apple, the iPhone now has its first formidable competitor. Think about the iPad. A million units in the last 30 days, creating a new platform for marketers. And this is further evidence that we're at a point in the universe where things are expanding. We've got a whole new platform launched, creating new opportunities and new challenges for marketers and brands. But even with all this progress, the incredible progress that we've made over the last 12 months, we are still at a time where there's an incredible imbalance between where consumers are spending their time and where marketers are spending their dollars to reach them. Even with the tremendous increases in penetration in, in, that we've had and share that we've had in digital compared to traditional mediums, we are still just a sliver of the overall marketing equation. Even the metrics that we provide limit our ability to get more brand dollars online. So in a study that came out in Q4 of last year by the IAB in Bain, uh, and this, the study was titled Building Brands Online, we learned a couple key facts. We learned that the measures that marketers want to build brands are online included things like brand awareness, purchase intent, and likelihood to recommend. Yet the measures that we delivered to those same brands are not those, but things like unique, view, unique visitors, click-throughs, and impressions. So back to big brand theory. So big brand theory is about aligning the elements in our universe to create a step function for ourselves and for our industry. Big brand theory is about identifying the things that we can do to unlock brand dollars online and start to equilibrate the imbalance that has persisted in our industry. So over the next couple days together, what we want to do is a couple things. What we want to do is hear from leaders in the space, hear about the things that they're working on, and learn best practices from the people who are out doing it every single day. We want to have the opportunity to network and make the connections with the people that will, that will be important to our evolving as an industry and as a brand. And we want to create the opportunity for ongoing dialogue long after we leave Miami. So we'll do that by taking the content that we create here and building a white paper that we'll distribute to all participants. We'll take content that we work on together here and make it available through the, through the website. And we'll take video. So you'll see there's a roaming video here in the audience. There's a spot outside where we'll ask you for your perspective and your point of view. And we'll put that together and make it available for participants going forward. So welcome to the 2010 Compete Digital CMO Summit. If this is your first time attending this event, thank you for making the effort to get here and for participating. If you're a veteran of one of these events like Dennis Hogan, who this is his sixth consecutive event with us, we appreciate your continued support and commitment to this event. So what, is, what does big brand theory mean for Compete? As I mentioned earlier, as, as we spent a lot of time early on uh, when we put the event together talking to brands and convincing them why they should care about what consumers are doing online. That's not the case any longer, right? We have an opportunity, over the last year I had the opportunity to have many conversations with you, with colleagues, with, with brands, and with advertisers. And what I've learned over those, over those 12 months are a couple things. What I've learned is that we've moved from a point of purely collecting the data and making it available to you to connecting the data. So from collecting data to connecting data. And a couple examples of what we do with that are we, we use that connections to identify critical pieces of information that will drive the business. We integrate them with other technologies or really smart people or both to, to basically create new insights that help you move the needle on your business. A couple of examples of things that we're working on are the partnership that we have with JD Power and with Cannondale Retail where we connect online behavior to offline transactions. 
So with JD Power, what we're doing is printing it, presenting a new view of the auto purchase funnel that we haven't seen before. We're basically inverting the auto purchase funnel because we can see what clients, what consumers are doing online before a vehicle purchase. With Canon, Cannondale Retail, we're looking at the effectiveness of online marketing programs at driving consumer engagement and sales. So looking at CPG companies and correlating their ad spend to what that means to sales in their channel. So not just brand equity, but actual sales. Other examples of these connection points include what we're doing with dynamic logic. So taking brand awareness metrics and combining them with real consumer behavior to, to track what people are doing online and, and in response to a particular advertising campaign and how they engage with the brand's website or third party websites. We're working closely with, D, with TNS to, do digital, to use digital data to build dynamic profiles and, and appending those to the attitudinal data that's at our, that's at our tip, fingertips. We're also connecting custom digital segmentation with companies like 24-7 and Real Media and, the, and Group M's MIG group to take the information that we learn of what consumers are doing and connecting it through the entire process from digital segmentation through media planning, execution, and post-buy measurement. So what this means for Compete is we will continue to invest to create new insights that leverage our own data and we're still scratching the surface on how we use our own data, but combining that with data from partnerships and other companies within the, within the family. We'll continue to aggressively push differentiated products for media planning and measurement, and we will aggressively roll out international digital measurement with our partnership with Kantar and WPP as a basis for that rollout. So we're hoping that Eric Salama would be with us today. Uh, Eric is the CEO of Kantar. Uh, unfortunately, there's an event, or apparently there's a, a pretty important event happening in the UK today, something about a parliamentary election, right? So Andy Brown and, uh, and Richard Fielding tried to explain this to me last night, how the, the dates are, move around and how the incumbent gets to pick the date that this happens to don't completely understand it, but apparently it's really important. Um, also, lots of interesting news coming over about what's happening so far, so stay tuned for that. Um, but I have the opposite. So what we've asked Eric to do is make a video introduction. So Eric Salama is the CEO of Kantar. Kantar is the information and insights group within, within WPP, which includes more than 20 specialist companies in 80 countries and with more than 26,000 employees worldwide. Cantar companies include names that you certainly know and have heard of, Cantar Media, Millward Brown, TNS, The Futures Company, Cantar Retail, Cantar World Panel, and Lightspeed Research, to name just a few. So uh, I think if you've had the opportunity to interact with Eric, you'll find him an incredibly insightful and client-focused individual, and uh, I think you'll appreciate hearing his feedback and his insights today. So we asked Eric to basically identify a couple key questions for us. We've asked Eric to talk about what he's hearing from clients and the challenges that they face, and then we asked him to posit a question to us on what is the question that we need to work on together over the next couple of days to go answer. So with that, I will queue up, I will queue up Eric. <laughs> 